turned off. Ah! What even? I blame you, Jones, because you're over there. Hey guys, what's up? It's Vampire Bride, and today I'm doing the PlayStation 2 update video. A couple of videos back, I did a PlayStation 2 cleanup video, and I mentioned that I have three defective PlayStation 2s that I'm hoping to get two working PlayStation 2s out of. Well, that was a couple of months ago, so I'm going to do an update as to why I don't have that done yet. We're still in the process of getting them fixed, as both Life and the PlayStation 2s have been throwing everything they could at us. That was great timing. I'm not going to go into details at the life problems, but I will go into details about what has been going on with these PlayStation 2s. I'm hoping that, I mean, I'm sharing the story, and I'm hoping that, you know, if other people are having the same issues that we've had going through with these PlayStation 2s, that maybe that'll help. The first of the three PlayStation 2s that we have was actually messed up because of the power button. The power button stopped working whenever someone close to us was using a CB radio and it interfered over here with our speakers a couple of times and it was causing the PlayStation 2 to go on and off without us messing with it. And we didn't think to flip it off quick enough, we just turned it back off, went about our way, and it kept doing it a couple of times and it made the power button quit working. So that's why we had to take that one apart, clean it up, and get it fixed. The second and third one were bought because we found them at a good price. They looked like they could be fixed, and if not, then one of them could be used to fix that power button. The first major issue we had with the PlayStation 2s is the ribbon cable for the power buttons. They are very long, thin, finicky, terrible little cables, and I hate them. They're put in the PlayStation 2 in a way that they are having to be folded in multiple different spots in order to get to where they need to go. They're so thin as any ribbon cable is and it is just a horrible design and they're easily broken. You can buy them. We ordered a couple off of Amazon because at least two of the three ribbon cables that we had in the three PlayStation 2s do not work. Also on these cables is a little blue plastic piece, a blue plastic tab that comes off very easily. So when you're trying to put it back into its spot, that piece comes off and then it won't clamp down and hold the cable in place. We had a bit of trouble with that also. Between these two tiny little pieces, parts of the PlayStation 2's power cable, I was unable to get even one of the PlayStation 2's working properly. We didn't realize that it was just the cable or the buttons not working, so we were changing out the motherboard and the different parts to all three of them. I had them all in separate bags so that I knew which of the PlayStation 2's pieces went to which PlayStation 2, but after testing all the different pieces, that didn't last long. So between all this troubleshooting, the pieces got all mixed up, and some of the stuff we weren't sure because we hadn't been able to fully troubleshoot the two that we had gotten from the store, we weren't sure if those motherboards were even working. So we had to trade out pieces to figure that out as well. That sounds like a mess because it was one. So this is one of the new unbent up power cables that we're going to be using to fix the PlayStation 2s. The next problem we had was with the, guess what, another ribbon cable. This one is for the controller port. The PlayStation 2s were put aside in a box while we were waiting on the power cord ribbon cables to get here and also it was time for the holidays, so honestly, they got set aside for a couple of months without being messed with. Then, when I did get back to working on them, we started having trouble with the cords to the controller ports. You have to take the metal piece off of the motherboard in order for the clamp to the controller port cord slot to open up all the way. So, I was trying to stick the cord in without 
taking the metal piece off and obviously that was a problem so I was testing the different cables and I thought that the clamp wasn't working so I tried it on a different motherboard and realized that that is the problem. I saw that there are actually quite a few people that have had the same problem and others have opened it up, put it back together with no problem at all. So if there is a problem with that, you just have to take this metal piece off and you are able to open the clamp and get the cord in there. So it's in there now, I just have to put it all back together. The controller port ribbon cables we have at this point look pretty worn out, so I probably will just go ahead and order a couple more of the ribbon cables before I put it all back together because it would really suck to, after all of this, put it all back together because if you've been inside a PlayStation 2, you know that there's a bunch of little ribbon cables to put the disk drive and all of that back together. It would really suck to put all that back together just to find out that the controller port ribbon cable doesn't work anyway. All of that over a couple of little ribbon cables and that tiny clip that holds them in. Hopefully now I'll be able to get them all put together pretty easily and get them working. I'll be back with another update soon, hopefully with at least two of the PlayStation 2's working. Hope you guys enjoyed this little update video. If you did, hit that like button and of course subscribe for more videos to come.